Hey there fellow exiles, it's Void241 back with another video. This is gonna be my League Starter Energy Blade Inquisitor Corpseless Cremation, otherwise known as Cremation of the Volcano, one of the new transfigured gems that we've gotten in 3.23. A few things before we get into the build. First off, this is a new skill gem, so I don't really know how hard it's going to be to acquire. For all I know, I'll have to run Labyrinth for three days before I get the gem, so in no means am I endorsing playing this build. This is simply something I want to do for the sake of experimentation, and this video is just in case there's a few other madmen like me out there. Additionally, the second disclaimer I do want to put out is that I have not had much time to either min-max this B.O.B. or test for the most part outside of some self-poison testing to check cremation overlaps, None of this has really been tested. I haven't tested leveling this build. I haven't really tested an endgame version of this. A lot of this is just stuff I'm going to be winging for next patch, mostly because I'm excited about new gems. This video is simply there in case there's someone else out there like me who enjoys doing stupid stuff at League Start. Unlike in previous leagues, I will be streaming at twitch.tv slash void241 for the entirety of League Start. So do come on over and hang out. We could probably have a good time. And you guys could tell me exactly what your league starting, either there or in the comments down below. I'd love to see what other people have for build ideas. So without further ado, let's get into the build. The first thing I would like to mention is, of course, the new cremation and how we're simulating it in BOB. Now, there's a variety of different things that this new cremation gem has, so let's tackle them one by one. The first thing that you'll notice about the new cremation gem is that it has approximately 30% less damage in terms of both added damage effectiveness as well as the actual flat damage on the skill gem. So to simulate this, I have put in a 30% less damage modifier into the BOB so that we have slightly more accurate damage as far as calculations are concerned. Furthermore, another thing that the new cremation does is it completely alleviates the need for requiring corpses. However, this comes with additional downsides. Aside from just lowering your damage by 30%, it also reduces the base duration down to 2 seconds. Now, this is a significant downside because the geyser count goes up to a maximum of 6 instead, which means you would essentially need a cost rate of 3 per second to maintain 6 geysers at all times. There's a few ways around that. For one, I'm going to be scaling some duration on the build. With this wheel, we get enough skill effect duration to actually raise the duration of our cremation from 2 seconds all the way up to about 4 seconds. This should, in theory, feel a lot better to play in terms of not needing to replace the cremation quite as often. On the same note, I'm also running Spell Cascade. Now, while this does decrease my damage, not only in terms of damage output, but also in the fact that it eats up a link, it makes it so that I drop three cremations every time I cast. So now, instead of needing to co constantly cast while the cremations are up to make sure they stay up, I only have to cast about twice every four seconds, making the playstyle incredibly passive. On that note, however, if you decide that an active playstyle is more for you, you can replace this gem with either Elemental Focus or Pinpoint Support. Either of these provide a very, very large damage boost at the cost of having a comfortable playstyle. As you can see here, with four stacks of intensity, Pinpoint more than doubles the damage. I, however, am not so sure this is the play. It is something I will test during the league just to see how it feels and if maybe it's an alternative gem swap for single target. Moving on from just the gem, in terms of the scaling, I would also like to talk about the scaling is going to be Energy Blade Inquisitor. Now, in case you don't know how these mechanics work, Energy Blade will cut your energy shield in half and then provide you a bunch of flat damage based on that new energy shield value. That flat added damage will be on your energy blade, which will replace your weapon. And that weapon will, of course, add flat weapon damage. However, thanks to clever use of game mechanics, we can use spellblade support as well as battle mage to take that flat damage 
from the energy blade and apply it to our spells. Now, this is where I would like to give a lot of credit to Captain Lance because I actually got the idea looking at what he's doing from Le for League Start, which is energy blade cost on crit Inquisitor. I would definitely go check out his video for his League Starter as well as his channel because to be honest, everything on his channel is much, much better planned than what I have prepared here. So I'm going to link both of those down in the description. Definitely check out his League Starter video if you guys want something a little bit more precise. Now aside from just the Energy Blade giving our skill flat spell damage, there's one more thing that Energy Blade has coming next league. The quality of Energy Blade is going to be changed so that it gives 5% more energy shield. However, this is additive with a 50% less on the gem, which means we're going to go from 50% less down to 45% less. If we were to put this into POB, you'll actually notice it's 10% more energy shield because we go from a total of 50% energy shield to 55% energy shield. 10% more energy shield is not only 10% more defense, but also 10% more damage because of the way that energy blade works. Due to it taking the flat damage based on the post calculation of energy shield, increasing our energy shield via this method will actually also increase our damage, which is a huge buff. If you were to go ahead and link an enhance to this as well, it'll actually boost it 20% more energy shield, which is a very, very large damage boost, as well as defense boost. The quality on our cremation will give us 10% increased projectile firing rate, which is also about 10% more damage. Now, back to the gear. Other than that, we have the standard energy shield scaling setup with Wrath, Pith, Globe, Crown of the Inward Eye, Shaper's Dodge, Ivory Tower, and an Astromentus, and Cyclopean Coil provides a large amount of damage early on. Most of these items are pretty basic, however, they will probably be very expensive because I expect a lot of people to want stuff like Wrath, Pith, or Ivory with the introduction of the new Warlock Ascendancy. Finally, we also use a Brutal Restraint with Balbala to give us Flask Charges. Now, on this build, I don't have a Flask Belt. However, you will notice that my Flasks have decent uptime. Now, if you hover over the Coruscating, you might be worried that the Flask uptime doesn't actually say 100%. However, you can craft on Use at the End of Flask Effect on this flask and it will stay up most of the time in most cases there will be a niche amount of scenarios where this will fall off mostly if you're just afk and hideout or in other scenarios however for most of your time playing this game this will be up if you feel a little bit uncomfortable with this you can always get some more flask effect duration on your jewels which in this bob are very very sparing you can also always switch out a cyclopean coil for a belt that grants you flask charges with maybe a hunter mod for percent increased for attributes overall that's pretty much it for the build for the most part it's kind of hard to test any of this or give you guys any gameplay because it's a completely new gem and it works in very different ways and honestly i'm quite unsure of how this will work in fact, this might be the most unsure I've ever been of one of my own league starts ever. So again, I really don't recommend playing this. Now, finally, to wrap things up, I would like to talk about leveling. Now, again, I don't really have any plans for this build. Quite fleshed out. However, for leveling this build, if you decide to be a masochist and play it anyway, despite all the warnings, I would do something similar to how racers do with explosive impact grabbing dark arts for the 60% increased damage with two different weapon types and path over to elemental overload, grabbing some cost speed and finally the firewalker node. And then from there, you're probably going to be running the first lab for as long as possible until you get the new cremation gem. Anyway, thank you guys for watching the video. That's pretty much it for my league start. I hope you guys have a league start that is significantly better than mine because I really don't have much faith in this. This might be the least faith I've had in one of my league starters. However, if any of you do decide to play the build, please let me know how it goes or if you make any improvements because, again, this hasn't really been min-maxed very much. Finally, 
I'd like to re-mention that you guys can catch me over on twitch.tv slash void241. I will be streaming this league start and I'll be streaming a lot more often from now on. So definitely check me out and hopefully drop by and tell me how your league starts going. I'd love to hear about you guys if you're doing different builds and whatnot because I'm always open to new ideas. If you guys like the video, be sure to leave a like down below. Subscribe to my channel if you like my content and hit that notification icon so that you get notified about my videos in the future. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.